So today's speaker is Bu Chuan Li from University of Copenhagen, who will tell us about blue shift for real oriented cohomology theory. Okay, thanks, Bu Chuan. Take it away. Yeah. yeah, thank you for the invitation. Yeah, it's really my pleasure to speak here. And uh, yeah, let me first be more precise about my title. So I want to say uh, which real oriented cohomology series will be the interesting one in this talk and uh, what kind of the phenomena, the blue shift phenomena, uh, we will be interested in. So let me start with the real oriented commodity theory. Uh, let's first start with uh, something more familiar, the complex orientation. So if we start with the uh, ring spectra, then a complex orientation for this commodity theory is a class in the second commodity for CP infinity whose restriction to CP1 Uh, is is one, so this is the same as. Pi out of the coefficient ring. So, famous examples might might be like the complex cobordian theorem, and uh, all kinds of generalized commodity theories constructed from MU. Maybe like the and Johnson Wilson theory. And also the Ns Morawa K theory. Well for N equals one. This is a P local complex K theory. So all of them are very important players for chromatic homotopy theories and uh, has been studied by many people for many years. Well, so now let's define the real orientation. So basically we can mimic the same definition there. So let's denote the uh, sign representation by sigma and uh, the regular representation by rho where rho is just one plus sigma. Then we can just modify the definition for real orientation. Now we start with a genuine C2 spectra. So a uh, real orientation. It's a class. Now it's in ROJ grading commodity series. In degree rho, of CP infinity and uh, the CP infinity admits a non-trivial C2 action by complex conjugation. Oh, and uh, uh, in this talk, I will use the notation, the bold letters to indicate it's a C2 spectra. So similar to the uh, complex orientation, we also ask the restriction to CP1. If you, if we take the action into consideration, this is just S rule. We also ask for the restriction is also one. Well, similarly, the 
examples might be the real cobalt serum. And also from there, we can construct a real Johnson Wilson serum. and the real Morava K theory. Guchuan, the, the underlying spectra on all three of these examples are the three examples you had earlier, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah, so the underlying is exactly MU and uh, EN and KN. Yeah, so, yeah, and also you would expect this will play important roles in chromatic homotopy theory. And uh, that's exactly the case. Especially like who Krish started to study these guys and uh, recently Hill Hawkins Ravenel has breakthroughs along these lines. So like all of this one has shed a lot of more information on higher heights nowadays. Uh, so let me just give some example to say that these are interesting objects to study. And also they're very useful for the, from the chromatic home view point view. So if, if you attend the last week's talk, like Prasid mentioned uh, a work from Kichu and Wilson about the ERN, which is the C2 fixed point for this real oriented commodity theory. For vector bundles. Well, also, uh, if you just search on archive like just last month there's a nice paper by ns hill mike hill uh danny xiaolin shi and uh, ming kong zeng will they construct a nice model nice c uh nice g equivalent real oriented model for the higher lubin-tate spectra with explicit formulas of the actions on the coefficient strings, where G is a group of cyclic of order two to the power n. And you can see the date is it's very recent. So I hope to make the point that in this direct along these directions, like there are new things and the new information happens like every day. Like if you just say like there will be more papers and uh, a long list of names making contributions along these lines. And today, well, for like for the for this talk, like the real oriented commodity theory will be ERN. And we are interested in some blue shaped phenomena. Well, this was, uh, in this talk, it means something like the Tate fixed points. Lower the chromatic heights. Well, here this then like, we refer to the height. Like it comes from term uh, terminologies from the formal group laws. And uh, I'll be more precise about this statement. Let me first define the Tate fixed point. So if we start from a G spectrum, then we can define the Tate fixed point to be the co fiber of the norm map from the home to be orbits to the home to be fixed points. And uh, so the tape fixed points lower the chromatic highs, like 
one precise statement will be a theorem of Ando, Morava, and uh, Stavsky. Where they show uh, let CP be the cyclic group of order P acts trivially on the Johnson Wilson theorem. and uh, define the ideal. Well, this is some elements in the coefficients ring, which is known to be the polynomial rings with variables in certain degree. Uh, let me rewrite this part. Well, this is some uh, technical modification, but the point is there's a map of spectra. On one side, you will have the white sum of EN minus one. So in particular, the height is N minus one. And on the other hand, you will have the K fixed point of EN, which has height N. So in this sense, like the height is lower by one from N to N minus one. And this map will induce a weak equivalence after completion as the ideal. Or equivalently, this is the same as doing k minus one localization. So the high one example will be the Tate fixed point of KU will be right sum of HQ. So today's goal is trying to construct a C2 lifting of this map. So let me first introduce some notation. Uh, let's give the uh, abstract group of cyclic order two, two names, where sigma two and C two, where by sigma two, this one is always has a trivial action. Well, and also I should say, for construction is at prime two. And uh, the C2 will have a non-trivial C2 action. Which one are you restricting to the prime two because somehow like that's the only like interesting case that the odd primes are, uh, be, because C2 like, has it, order two that somehow the odd primes are well behaved or something? Yes. Yeah, like at least for, for the ERN construction, like the, for all prime, it's not interesting. But, yeah. but there, there might be something interesting in all primes, but which, which uh, I don't know yet. So it's, the reason is more like all the HHR stuff is focused on prime two. Okay. So for the all prime, like fewer has been inside. For example, the coefficients ring at the action is not clear yet. Okay. Yeah. yeah thanks. Yeah. So, like for the prime two case, 
uh, our theorem is. So let's do sigma two x trivially on ERN, the real Johnson Wilson theorem. Now, like, keep in mind there is a non-trivial C two action there. So similarly, we can define an ideal. Looks very familiar. In the coefficients ring. So these VA bars are exactly the liftings of the VIs. So now we also have a map of C2 spectra. Well, looks very similar, uh, except we change the grading of 2G to rho G. And the, 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 map, the underlying map of this one is exactly the classical case. So this also becomes a C2 weak equivalence after completion. At the ideal. I ask him a question about the notation here in this map and also the, the previous one you were done. Why are you writing yeah. a limit as I approaches infinity? Why aren't you just letting J go from you know zero to infinity? Isn't it just an infinite wedge? Uh, yes, it's an infinite wedge, but the difference is in this way, like the generator is like a Laurent power series instead of a formal power series. Oh, okay. So it, it, it goes only finite you are only allow finite powers in positive degree. Okay. So it's a Laurent theory. And okay. it will be the same if, if ERN was like connected, then there's no difference. But okay. since it's periodic, so there is a, there is a difference between the, this notation and all the right sum. Okay, all right. Yeah. And, and this will be more clear, like, if we see in the proof how the algebra, algebra key both sides works. Yeah, so this, is, um, this one, like the underlying one, recovers the classical result. But since it's a C2 equivalent map, now there's something new. Like, especially if we take the fixed point, we will have something, some new information. So let's. Let's denote the fixed points uh, with non bold letter. And uh, let's also introduce some integers, like for the simplicity of the notation. So, what's special about these integers is there exists the elements in this degree plus sigma in the ROG grading homotopy groups of ERN minus one, that is invertible. Well, so this allows you to move any elements in the homotopy, ROG grading homotopy groups into the integer part. For example, we can move VK bar into, let's call it VK height just by timing the right degree of y to cancel out the sigma part. Now we can define uh, ideals like purely generated by elements in the integer grading. So then we have the corollary of the theorem as taking the C2 fixed points.
So this one also becomes a weak equivalence after completion at the ideal or k minus one localization. Well, and uh, so this is for n greater or equal than two. The reason is just like the lambda does not exist for n equals one. But for n equals one, it's also very easy to write, write down the results. Therefore, this special case, like you don't need the Laurent series anymore. Or maybe they have more familiar names. So this is the result by Greenis May. And they also notice, uh, so you may see that in the theorem, we always start with something has trivial action. So Greenis May also notice that If X is with a trivial sigma two action, then the Tate fixed points can be identified as the home to limit of X smash with truncations of RP infin minus infinity to, to infinity, where this one is can be defined as a Tom Spectra of the K4 pathological bundles. So uh, some of you may be familiar with this construction that this is a Mahada inverse construction. And Davis and Mahada also showed a result for the connective version. of the taste splitting. And uh, this has application, applications, for example, to Mahada invariants, uh, Mahada roots or Mahada invariants, also named as root invariants. So like along this line, like one uh, potential interesting application for our theorem would be, so our coloring is, is something about the fixed point. That's a new information. And uh, since we know this one is the same as uh, Mahada inverse constructions, so this may give some information of the ERN based Mahoda invariants. Well, this is this is a good thing because classically the construction is about EN and this one is torsion free, the home topic groups. So it has no interesting pervasive image from the sphere. But this one, like we know there are many interesting elements from the sphere. So that could be a potential application along this line. 
in the Goshant, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, why why is it so that with capital K O we get a wedge sum end of H Q, whereas with little K O we get the wedge sum end of H Z? No, I think one is connective, the other is not connective. So yeah. you take you take the connective cover ah. through the cover. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. Maybe I see it. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, so like, so, uh, yeah, so our uh, results like gives new information and it has interesting application. And also I want to emphasize that uh, in the ingredients of the proofs, there is also something interesting. So let me sketch the proof. So we can see the interesting ingredients. So the inter interesting ingredients will be parametrized uh, Tate construction. So let's just denote it as, make a notation for it now. We'll go into this one in detail, like in a second. So the sketch of the proof is something we first, the theorem is trying to construct this match. And we first construct uh, blue shift match from one side. To the other, but instead of taking the classical Tate fixed point, we take the parametrized one. And second, we show a comparison that the parametrized and the classical one in this case were the same. And we'll see like this one, these constructions naturally arise in solving these problems. But also, this construction is a special case. Of the construction. By Greenleaf and May. So they define the Tate spectra. of a family of subgroups. So this special case for the group C2 semi-direct uh, semi sum, a finite group G, where you can allow C2 X on G by sending elements to the inverse if G is abelian. So this special case has been extensively studied by JD and his co-authors, Jisha. So this will be a important ingredients for our proofs. So let me just define the parametrized state construction first, follow the like Greenish May, and then give a alternative definition for our special case. 
So for the general definition, so we can define EJ tilde to be the cofiber of the map from EJ plus to S naught. Oh, so I guess bear with me if you are very familiar with the Tate diagram. So you can smash this one with X. And then there's a map from X to the co-free construction of X. So you will have a diagram. Where the first will turns out to be a equivalence. And the last part is a push out. From here, taking G fixed points. The diagram becomes the following diagram, where this one is a geometric fixed point. So this gives an alternative definition for Tate fixed point. This is the norm map, and it's the cofiber of the norm map. And it can also be regarded as a G fixed point of this one. So now, for any family of subgroups in G that is closed under sub conjugation let's call this family s we can define the universal f space by asking the home the home type is to determined by the h fixed point to be either just one point uh, or like equivalently contractible or it's uh, empty depending on if the subgroup is in the family or it's not in the family So examples will be, I can take the family, just be the trivial group. And uh, this one is exactly EG, as we have seen before. But there also, I can take something else. For example, if I'm starting with a group, with a normal subgroup there, I can take the families to be all the subgroups in there, such that the intersection with the normal subgroup is trivial. So this satisfies condition because conjugation doesn't change the normal subgroup. Well, this will be the universal n space. So now we say like for any family F, we can define a space EF. So we can just replace EG by EF in the previous diagrams. And now that allows us to take, to define 
Tate construction or Tate fixed point of G uh, with respect to a family of subgroups. So in our case, the group will be C2 semi-direct sum sigma 2, where the C2 action is the non-trivial one. Or like the generator of C2. And the uh, sigma 2 will be a normal subgroup in there. We can take the families to be. This one. So this produce a Tate fixed point, and we'll denote denote this one. by TC2 sigma 2 in this talk. So that's the parameterized uh, Tate construction will appear in this talk. So I hope this definition makes sense. So this is something conceptually you want to think about and it might be interesting. So let me give an alternative definition for this special case and you will see that why this one will arise in these problems. So as we said before, if let's say X is a C2 spectra with trivial sigma two action. And then or maybe that's the whole group X there, but sigma two X trivially zero. So we can define the or it's a definite alternative definition for this special case. So this says a home to be limit so it also smashed the time space but now instead of taking the rp infinity which is bc2 the B sigma two, we take the B C two sigma two here. I think this has been named by Q I, like uh maybe Q minus I infinity in JD's work. So this is exactly the analog for the classical case. If you have a trivial action. Like you, you can identify it with the spectral smash with RP infinity minus N to infinity and taking the limit. So here the same thing holds. And if we take this definition, we'll see why this one is the why we want to work with the parameterized one in our work first. So recall that in the sketch proof, we want a blue shift map. So which is, uh, looks, looks at the following. maps to a some kind of tate
of ERN. And how, how to construct this map? So it's an analog to the classical case. It's compute homotopy groups of the right hand side. And then construct left hand side with the same homotopy groups. Then finally, you can construct the map. using ERN minus one module structure on both sides. So it's a computation. In the first step, the computation, we'll see why we want to work with the parameterized one. And also we'll see, like in the computation, it appears to be the wrong theory. That's why we choose this limit of red sum on the left hand side to make the home table P groups has the right format. So let me first do the non-equivalent case to see how the computation works. The condition is we start with something complex or oriented. Well that gives us the E star of CP infinity automatically as a formal power series with the element in degree two. And we have seen that for the trivial Tate construction, this one is closely related to itself smash RP infinity and maybe some truncation version of it. But from knowing the commodity of CP infinity combined with the fiber sequence, so this uh, you apply in classified space to C2 to S1 to S1 degree two map. And you will have a fiber sequence relates RP infinity to CP infinity. So this one shows that the E star commodity of RP infinity will just be the formal power series quotient. Well, it will be the quotient of this map, what it, what it does on the commodity theory, because it's degree two map. It's exactly the two series of the formal group. Well, if this one is not a zero divisor, well, from here, plus the fact this is the same as the. Uh, limit of like it might be like enough to convince oneself to see that the uh, home to be groups of the Tate construction is the wrong series quotient the P series. So this tells us like if we start with the complex or anything series, so it's very easy to compute the home TV groups of the right hand side. And we say because this identification, there will be the the wrong theory or the limit to the infinity happens. So that's why we want to choose the limit to i to infinity on the left hand side. So each copy is just like 
one copy for x to some degree in this formula. Well, now we want to apply the whole approach into the C2 equivalent case. Now we start with something is real oriented. Well, it gives us the commodity of CP infinity as a power theory on one generators in degree row. Well, how, however, to keep on the same approach, we need to make this one also to be We need to make this one to be a C2 equivalent map. Otherwise, we cannot like doing the like exact sequence computations in the C2 equivalent case. Well, so there's the C2 actions on the CP infinity as a complex propagation. So this gives a uh, non-trivial actions on RP infinity as a fiber. So that's the reason why we cannot just take the classical Tate constructions, where the model use RP minus N to infinity. So just as the classical case, this one also can be obtained by applying the classing classification functors to the degree two map of S1 with the kernel as Z mod two. Now let's denote this RP infinity with non-trivial action as RP infinity tilde. So the underlying is exactly RP infinity. So by our notation, this is just like C2 sigma 2. So it's also the like the correct notation might be uh, to the family of this guy and quotient the action. Then we say that this one exactly will be bound, and uh, this one also appears in the parametrized Tate construction definition. So from here, we see that it's naturally we should work with the parametrized one, like in this case, instead of working with the classical one. So once we work with this one, then we can carry on the computation exactly like the classical case and construct the left-hand side to have the same homotopy groups. And we can also construct the ERN minus one module structures. So this one, Like it's thanks to who crash, like they work out the uh, helpful algebra structures for BPR. So lift BP star BP. So after this one. We are, but why we just why we still need to go back to the classical one, do the comparison to show that the parametrized state
So C2 equality is the same as the classical case. But this is something special for ERN. Where here, like in the argument, you will use like something, this one is free and the co-free, and also use the ERN orientation for vector bundles. So this is not something not true in general, but only works for special case and it works for our case for the ERN. So the reason we want to go back to the classical case is because the classical one has a like, interesting fixed point. Because the classical one, the definition of the model will be ERN smash RP minus N infinity. Where in the classical one, this one has trivial C2 action. So when, when you take fixed point, C2 fixed point, so this one exactly gives the fixed point, the Tate construction of the fixed point. And that's what we are interested in. For that reason, so although it's naturally to from the question, it's more natural to work with the parameterized state one, but in the result, we prefer to show a comparison region and then go back to the classical state one. And that one allows us to deduce the uh, interesting splitting on the fixed points. Now, so that's basically the proof for our theorems. And so for the remaining time, let me say a little bit more along, along this line, like what could be done. So there are other phenomena for the blue shift of the Tate constructions. For one example, like we have the one issue results on Mariah K series by Greenis and Stavsky. So if we start with the finite groups, and uh, let's also say X trivially on Mariah K theory, then the Tate construction is vanishing. So with similar approach, we can also prove that for like finite abelian group, so a parametrized state one vanishing, C2 equivalently, well, the condition for abelian is because uh, we take the special case for the parameterized state construction. In particular, we need a C2 action on G. So in here, we choose G to go to G inverse. That puts actual conditions on abelian. But we can also drop the conditions for the classical state construction case. So for the real morale case series, now the condition is the same as J finite. This one is also contractible, in particular the fixed point, like contracts. So this might be some like further directions along these lines to provide more blue shaped phenomena. In the so also, as Dan asked, uh, like in the beginning, it might be also maybe interesting for all primes. So this is something we, we don't know, but like, so the, the taste splitting result for prime two, like the equivalent one would say in the,
like somehow relates. One can interpret it as the splitting relates from ENHC2 to EN-1HC2. And uh, in this sense, you can also ask for, maybe for all primes, then there is a, in certain degree, there will be CP actions. In particular, if it divides by P minus one. Then one could hope the splitting holds for between these two guys. And uh, so the, the approach might be take, taken similarly, but the hard part, the hard part or like the missing part for uh, this argument is like we don't have enough information for the let's see the CP covariant home to be uh, groups of the coefficients ring. So in particular, you see that in this case, the height should drop, drop by P minus one. So you should kill P minus one generators at one time. And the reason should be something like there are, the generators are permutated by the CP actions. But since we don't know enough for the actions on the home, on the coefficients rings. So like not much could be saved for the all prime case yet. So now the result is only for the prime two and there's a interesting splitting. But it's also very interesting to look for some interesting actions for the all prime case. Yeah, and also classically from the Greenis Tadowski, there they provide like the norm map is KN local equivalence. But like yeah, we don't know how to do that one like in more generality yet. So our result is still for the trivial actions for the value shapes. So there are also like interest interesting directions in that sense, in that direction. And also there are applications to Mahala invariants. Like may, maybe, like for example, this could be deal with ER3 based one. And this is like strongly suggested that uh, in this case, the like kappa bar goes to kappa bar two under the Mahala invariants. And whether this is true in Sapphire or not, is uh, also an interesting question for that directions. Yeah, that's uh, some interesting directions. And I think I'll stop here. Okay, I'm gonna unmute everyone so that we can thank him. Okay, we are just oh. about out of time, uh, but if there are any quick questions, we can take them before we wrap it up. Both, well, as so. Well, there's a remark saying there's there's no difference. The universe limit here to get some completion on the left. Uh, well, no, I think I, I do want this limit like to mimic the the wrong polynomial generators. Right. Or maybe it, like algebraically something like this one. Right. If X e minus degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's a reason for it. Okay, we are about out of time, so we'll wrap it up here for today. Uh, we'll meet again in two weeks in Bar Kong. We'll give be giving a talk. Um, so we'll see you guys then. Thanks. Bye, everyone. <laughs>